you know, I have never been a believer in quantum computers. I first worked on quantum computers back in the early 1980s. And I always thought, you know, there is the parallelism of quantum mechanics, but then there is the knitting together that you need to have a definite conclusion about what the answer was from your quantum computer. And the question is, it's actually, it actually has a certain blockchain analogy to it because it's kind of like the, um, uh, in, in a quantum computer, the consensus mechanism is non-trivial. In other words, inside the quantum computer, you've got all these threads of quantum process going on, but now you have to reach consensus to be able to say, this is the answer. This is the thing the human's gonna take away from the quantum computer. Um, and that's that really is never accounted for. The, the difficulty of that knitting process, of that reaching consensus process, the difficulty of consensus is not discussed when you think about the usual formalism of quantum mechanics. And so when you do start thinking about that, well, when you actually look at practical quantum computers, people are always saying, you know, when you go, I shouldn't say it, but you know, like when you go visit a quantum computer company and you finally get to the back room and you're finally talking to the actual engineer, it's like, well, yes, we see this noise that we can't really account for, and it's all a bit messier than the front office story type thing. Um, and, you know, I, I have this hope that if you really get the data on all of that kind of mysterious noise, that um, it's it's going to end up the noise is the signal, so to speak. Yeah, well, so, so okay, so this is this is interesting. I, I, I love it. Um... We we think similarly. So I, you know, my my background is material science. So I have a little bit more uh, depth here. My um, thought process on quantum computers is that it's also uh, BS, really, because the 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 issue that you get is to make them useful, you need to have uh, sort of a high number of entangled you know qubits at once, right? Um, and the issue you have is sort of just physically, the, the more you have, the more likely they are to decohere. And all of, uh, you know, quantum computing is relying on the error rate being independent. Um, but if you think about a physical system and what would cause a qubit to want to decohere, uh, clearly they're sharing the same environment and just a phonon is something that won't, you know, uh, specifically impact one of them and not the other. Ergo, it's ridiculous to make the statement that you think that they're going to have an independent error rate uh, just on that statement alone. So until you can prove that you can get an independent error rate, you must, I would say, assume that it would not be an independent error rate. And if it's not independent, you're going to end up converging to your statement, which is that you're just going to end up effectively measuring the noise. So, yeah, I mean, I think that the, I have this hope. Okay. So in our view of quantum mechanics, the, you know, the superposition of possible states is a story of different branches in the multi-way graph. And what you're doing when you have a superposition is you're sampling a region of branchial space and, uh, you know, a, a, a non-zero size region of branchial space. You're, you're going across multiple branches. And then there is this notion of max, maximum entanglement speed. Some event happens, and then that event can steadily spread out in branchial space. The, the event can affect other, you know, it can one branch can affect many branches, for example. And then the question is what, uh, you know, I, I have this, this guess that the maximum entanglement speed, which is the rate at which an event in, in branchial space can spread over time, that that maximum entanglement speed is related to the noise floor. And that roughly the, um, uh, and again, this is not properly worked out, um, but it's, uh, um, you know, my analogy I keep on using is um, Imagine that you were trying to do optics. You didn't know about diffraction. You only knew about geometrical optics. And you're trying to make this incredibly good telescope. And you're convinced. You've told your investors, we're going to be able to see grains of sand on the moon. And uh, you just have to polish the mirrors well enough to make that happen. Okay? You keep yeah. doing it. You keep polishing the mirrors. You keep saying, well, we, you know, uh, something happened. This, you know, the, the, uh, the thermal expansion was wrong, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in the end, 
what is going to, you know, screw you is diffraction, and yep. which is a completely different physical phenomenon that just wasn't part of what you were thinking about. And my guess is that 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 essentially the finiteness of the maximum entanglement speed, which is the, the maximum rate at which you can get co at which you can kind of knit together the branches of history. There's a maximum rate at which you can knit together the branches of history, and that that maximum rate is what's going to determine kind of what, how how many how many branches of history you can measure in a certain period of time. So if you say I'm going to make my quantum computer, it's going to run at a gigahertz or something, and then you say, well, okay, how much can I gobble in at, at uh, you know in a nanosecond or something or a microsecond or whatever it is, then it's going to end up it's only a certain number of branches of history, roughly, and that 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 is going to essentially limit your computation rate. And in the end, it's going to be a very subtle question whether you can actually do better with that kind of parallel inside, knitted together on the outside system versus a thing that's just, you know, one thread uh, within the system itself, you know, one. Um, so, uh, and even then, you know, you can have obviously multi-threaded computation where you're literally just doing different computations at different places in physical space, forget all this branchial space stuff.